Around 1,000 dorms for migrant workers will get a makeover by 2030. It's an interim phase before they must adopt higher living and hygiene standards in 2040 to prevent the spread of future diseases. And here's a look at how a dorm room may look at this stage. Each room can only house a maximum of 12 workers. The idea is to, quote, modularize these spaces so that each worker has a distinct area to call their own. Our beds should also be spaced at least one meter apart. Now, that's to help reduce the spread of infectious diseases among residents in the same room. Only ensuite toilets are allowed. Communal ones will only be permitted on a case-by-case -case basis for dorms with infrastructure constraints. And for every six residents that the washroom serves, it'll need to come equipped with a toilet, shower, and hand wash basin, and that is to improve livability. In all, this works out to about 3.6 square meters of living space per worker. This will increase to a minimum of 4.2 square meters per resident in 2040. Our dorm operators have welcomed these new standards. They say these can help them better handle infectious diseases like the COVID-19 outbreak in workers' dorms. But as Richard Matthew finds out, they're also concerned about the high costs of retrofitting and whether all this will add to a worsening bed crunch. This space may soon become a seven-storey building housing close to 1,100 residents. But it'll be a temporary solution to rehouse workers as older dorms get retrofitted and revamped. Among the major changes, ensuite toilets for its current blocks, which is close to 450 rooms. The cost of all these retrofitting works, without even building the new building that we are going to build, runs into the millions. So it's important that MOM come forward with uh, substantial support. Otherwise, eventually, the dorm prices will have to be adjusted upwards and it will impact uh, mostly the employers. The Manpower Ministry says it's considering some financial support to help dorms defray such costs. It stresses that dormitories will have to co-pay since they too get benefits from improved public health and business continuity. But even with the promise of government funding, other challenges persist. Other than cost is that to manage the bed spaces that are required. So whether um, this is also um, being studied together with MOM and uh, we need to mitigate that while works are going on, um, you know, the, the lives of uh, migrant workers are still uh, uh, being cared for and their well-being and their comfort to be able to work daily is not affected. To ease the bed crunch, MOM says it will build five additional purpose-built dormitories by 2028, on top of the two previously announced. This will add at least 47,000 beds to prepare for the dorms that have to be retrofitted and therefore taken out of circulation in the interim period. We want to manage the pace in which number of beds undergo transition so that we do not impact the overall supply of beds in the, in the ecosystem as well. We will continue to review our measures to improve housing resiliency and living arrangements for migrant workers. And of course, together with our partners, we hope to also build a stronger ecosystem to support their needs for the longer term. Operators have been given a four-year time frame to make the transitions less daunting. But large ones with higher public health risks will transit earlier. Only those with leases expiring in the next decade will be exempted from meeting these standards. Some non-governmental organizations who previously voiced concerns about living standards in dormitories say that these standards are a step in the right direction, but they also admit that more can be done. Workers who work in remote areas um, are having problems finding transport to get back home and sometimes they have to wait two, three hours to get back home, etc. So our other um, request and hope is that when we talk about the living conditions for migrant workers in dormitories, it also encompasses the surrounding circumstances such as transport, uh, you know, access to medical facilities, etc. Whenever we speak to workers about living conditions, the question of food is always right at the top. 
of the discussion. They can't cook their own because there are very few kitchen facilities. These dorm standards say nothing about food, uh, about um, giving them the kitchen facilities, uh, the storage facilities, the refrigeration facilities. And so, again, I think it falls short on a very important aspect of living. In response to such concerns, an association representing contractors says the scheme will improve worker productivity as they can rest better. But meeting these higher standards means an increase in costs, which will likely be passed down to the end consumer instead. Recently, because of this, uh, uh, this upgrading uh, requirement, uh, the, the dorm operator have uh, actually increased their their rental to four six hundred dollars per bit. The increase is more than hundred percent. Now it's a very challenging situation. We are contractor, we have limits. So eventually when you come to a certain situation, we have to pass the additional cost to the client.